Hello, I'm Terry Riley, and in celebration of Mio Day, the county librarian Austin Vaughan has asked us to contribute some little pieces of work we may have done over the years, and I'm happy to share some of the memories relating to Mio's Forgotten Thumb and Girls. There were 137 from Mio sent to Australia between 1848 and 1850. Uh, almost 90 from Balnau Workhouse, which is one of the biggest workhouses in the county, 15 from Castlebar Workhouse, 10 from Westport Workhouse, and 25 from Ballinrobe Workhouse. And they went on the, the Earl Grey scheme in 1848 to 1850, as I said. And they were not sent, actually. They were, they, they, they were picked out, chosen as being the best people to go, because they would have the resilience and the strength and the good health. Uh, living in the workhouse at that time, the good health wasn't a great thing, because people were dying of sickness more than the, the family itself. But these girls uh, volunteered eventually to go and uh, start a new life in Australia far, far away. It took them three months to get to Australia. One of the heroines of the book, Mio's Forgotten Time and Girls, was Winifred Nealis, Winnie Nealis, from Screen in County Sligo, with strong connections to Cross the Line and County Mio. And she ended up in Balnau Workhouse in 1845 with her mother, Bridget, and her uh, brother Patrick. Patrick was 11 years of age and they were forced to go into the workhouse because they just couldn't make ends meet. Their father had died, uh, they were destitute, they were living in the countryside. So they made their way to Ballinar workhouse, they gained admittance and once they gained admittance they were taken aside, the daughter Winifred and her mother Bridget were taken to one side and Patrick, the young boy 11, were taken to the other side. And they wouldn't see Patrick again until mass time every Sunday because boys at that time were taken completely away from their mothers and their sisters. And men lived on one side of the workhouse and women on the other side of the workhouse. So you can imagine the terror that went through Patrick's uh, veins and heart and soul as he was being dragged away down the corridor to the men's quarters where his mother and Winifred uh, made their way to the ladies' uh, section. Now, Winifred, got a long story short, she stayed in the workhouse for two or three years. She headed off to Australia in 1848, as I said, on the ship that Lady Kennaway with 28 other Balnagar workhouse girls. And it took her almost 80-something days to get to Australia, to Melbourne. And when she arrived there, she was eventually employed by um, a, an army man, uh, Major Wim uh, Firebrace. And, uh, she worked there for a few years and she met an English ex-convict, Samuel Pickerskill. And uh, they married in, 19, in 1853. And uh, in the, over the next 20 years, they had uh, nine children, five girls and four boys. And they moved around quite a bit and she was a very enterprising woman. She set up a, a tent hotel in Melbourne in the 1850s, early 1850s to cater for the inrush of gold miners, people coming to Australia to prospect for gold. She moved on, as I said, and eventually they ended up in Church, Church Hill Island, in uh, about 100 miles north of Melbourne. It was paradise fun for Winnie, and she described it as paradise. She said, this is paradise. Remember, coming from the workhouse, the greenness of the workhouse, the dampness of the workhouse, Suddenly to find yourself in a beautiful island of 144 acres. And it had been planted in 1801 by a surveyor, uh, Admiral Grant. And he had brought plants from England to plant in this lovely, beautiful island of Church, Churchill. And uh, she uh, loved the, the birds and the bees and the fruits that were on the island, the apple trees and pear trees. And she got to work herself on uh, sowing her own plants, vegetables, uh, flowers, and all that. And she saw the excess of what she produced to earn money to have her sons and daughters learn to read and write. And they were taught to do that by an ex-convict uh, who was uh, obviously educated and could do that. Winifred herself could not read or write. Uh, she absolutely loved uh, Church Hill. Uh, island, as I said, and uh, she uh, she loved the uh, Muna trees with their silvery bark, and she loved uh, the Muna, uh, the uh, Baxia trees, uh, which were uh, 
ponds of and nectar which the water birds fed on. She lived there for quite a while and, and she saved enough money to buy a lease on the property. She gave the money to her husband, Samuel. He went off to Melbourne, had a good time, spent the money on gambling. She lost her first chance of a house. He did it again later on uh, and uh, she thought she'd never recover. Eventually her son spent the house for herself on the island and she lived there until she died at the age of 59. Uh, she was a great woman, she did uh, made butter, she was a midwife, she worked hard, but she died from hemochromatosis, which was a disease, a blood disease particular to uh, Ireland at that time. And uh, she died at 59, as I said, her husband Samuel, the inveterate gambler, would not pay the five pounds for her headstone. Her sons did provide a headstone. Her husband Samuel survived her by 10 years. He died at the age of 75 when another betting place went wrong. He bet a five pounds at a young guy that he could wrestle through the forest on a horse. Uh, the head it off, Samuel was a, a very good uh, horseman, but he unfortunately collided with the tree, he broke his neck, and that was the end of Samuel. Uh, the family did very, very well, and I'm in contact with the great-grandson of Winifred Nealis, who supplied me with much information on the family, and that made her the heroine of the book, We Us Forgotten Famine Girls. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this very brief description of very tough times in Ireland, isolation, desolation, disease, and all the rest. She survived. She was a survivor. She was enterprising, and maybe her example gives us... Um, a fine example of our current situation where we're quarantined and isolated as COVID-19 rages through Ireland and through the world. Thank you. Yeah.